Well, thank you for joining us today for Violet Studio. I'm having lots of fun interviewing my friends and people at DYSG and associates out there all over. So I'm getting to interview people that do lots of really cool, inspiring, motivating, fun things. So today I have with me Sue Lyon and I adore Sue. I have so many of her paintings. I love her books. I love all these things that she creatively does because it really feels like it feels my soul. And so you sent out a newsletter this month that had a new um, art on it that I've never seen. It looked like Gaia with earth and stuff around. So Sue, talk to me a little bit about who are you? What do you do? And what are some of the fun things that you do and have? Well, I think my life is quite charmed. <laughs> I am, um, I actually started out to be a physical education major in college. I had done all the sports, I'd lettered in all the sports, I did all the math and sciences, and I just thought that would be a perfect match for me. I'd become a physical education teacher. Um, and my, when I went up to campus to sign up my freshman year, uh, my brother met me on the sidewalk. He was going to the engineering building. And he said, now that you're here, take some classes you never dreamed of taking. And I kind of laughed and I said, like what? I mean, I had prepared all through high school to have this major. He said, take an art class. <laughs> and, I, and I laughed and I said, I've never taken an art class. And he said, yeah, but you like to do it. So that got me thinking. I had, you know, 10 minutes to get to the building to sign up for my basic freshman classes and I got my courage up and I asked the woman registering me what would it take to take an art class and she said I don't have a clue I'm going to send you to the head of the department and I have to say I was very shy and getting out of line you know getting out of line <laughs> was not a good thing for me but I did there must have been some sort of angelic you know, push there for me to go to the head of the department who called the head of the art department. And I walked clear across campus, went over there, and she signed me up for a basic drawing class. And as it turned out, that class was taught by one of the best teachers I've ever had in my life, uh, John Berland. And it completely changed the way that I looked at things. That basic drawing class, how light source, how to draw spheres and cones and, you know, where to put the shadow, all of that kind of stuff. It was just a very basic 101 drawing class. And here I was taking my first, my first art class as a freshman in college. <laughs> you know, so I was with all these other students who had had four years of high school art and private art classes and it didn't matter. I was, I was in my element. By the time I reached my third quarter, because CSU had three quarters, I changed my major to graphic design. And instead of becoming a fine artist where I knew a woman would have a very difficult time making a living as a fine artist, you know, back, the, back in those days. So I changed it to graphic design, which meant that I would be designing to help companies um, be successful in promoting themselves. And, that, and that's what graphic design is. It's me being a good designer to help companies look good. You know, so it makes them, it makes them more professional, you know, when they put their, when they put their business card out there, or poster out there, or whatever. So I started in the days before computers, and I, I honestly got good at it. I, I got hired by the best design company in Denver at the time, and I had excellent training because of them because of who they were and that launched me into a very long and very happy career of being a graphic designer and i have my own freelance business now a uh, full-time freelance business i've worked for high-end agencies uh, i've had corporate um, 
communication, you know, visual communications experience, and I have my own full-time graphic design business again. Well, along the way, I started doing kinds of illustration, and particularly for the high-tech company that I was working for. It just called for different kinds of illustrations. So I kind of got my feet wet doing some illustration. And then I started when my, my kids were, my youngest daughter was about to graduate from high school. I decided to do a couple drawings for my daughters that launched me into the series of what I call my poetry drawings. And it, I've never looked back. I mean, I love doing those drawings, which, which are really uh, drawings that, um, that honor the feminine divine in all of us. Not just the feminine divine in women, but the feminine divine in all of us. And I've done a whole series of animal cards, you know, animal drawings, very simple animal drawings, and then a whole line of poetry drawings, what I call my poetry drawings, which is doing the illustration, writing the words. What I discovered in that process is many of those drawings, almost all of those drawings come from music. So I would go and um, go to the Boulder Philharmonic concert, and I would find myself in the middle of this music with you know, the drawings coming up in my head and even the words coming up in my head and I would write them down on my program, you know, during intermission. It's like, I got to get this down or I'll never remember it, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but I have, I have, um, you know, a whole, whole bunch of drawings that have come from a, Be a Beethoven string quartet or a, a Haydn symphony or um, Rachmaninoff or the Nutcracker. I have I have one that came from the Nutcracker, one of the dances in the Nutcracker. So I think uh, I, it took me a long time to call myself an artist. It didn't take me a long time to call myself a graphic designer, because a, a graphic designer is designing for somebody else. Not I'm not designing for me. I'm designing. I'm using my design skills to design for somebody else. That was, a much, that was a much easier thing for me to do, is to say I was a graphic designer. But to call myself an illustrator, or, oh my goodness, an artist, that was really tough. And I remember, I was about 54 years old before I could call myself an artist. You know, an artist. <laughs> It was a long time before I gave myself the um, kind of the ability to call myself something other than a graphic designer. And now I can say I'm an artist. I'm also a graphic designer, but, but along with that, I started doing writing. So, you know, my book, um, Night Threads, my book, How, to, How the Trees Got Their Voices, the children's book that I wrote, I had that experience camping. I was a Girl Scout leader, and I was camping with one of my Girl Scout troops. I had two troops. I have two daughters. I might as well have two troops, huh? Anyway, I was camping with my um, Girl Scout troop, and I had these voices in my head, and I kept thinking, where are these voices coming from? Where are they coming from? And I, my eyes swept over to a stand of aspens and pines, and I realized the trees were talking to me. It was like, okay, the trees are talking to me. And when I walked over there, that whole story literally downloaded into me, how the trees got their voices. And I illustrated, it took me 20 years to get it from, you know, from the story downloading, from me writing it, from me rewriting it a million times to actually illustrating it, it took about 20 years, but then it became an actual book. And then from there, I've written other children's books. I have some, you know, that I've written and I haven't illustrated yet. I've written and I've illustrated other people's children's books. And then came this, 
message from afar saying when I got up one morning, I had this voice in my head again saying, you know, all those dreams you've collected over the years, they need to be compiled in a book. And I'm going, what? Are you kidding me? Write these. I've written, I had written the dreams down because they're just, they're astounding. They're like short stories that are very magical. They're, they have characters. They're like a movie. They're, they have a plot. <laughs> these dreams have been coming in for decades and I jot them down and I threw them in a folder. And here's this voice in my head saying, you know what? They need to be compiled in a book. So by that time, I was older. I had gotten, I had, I had honored these, <laughs> these voices in my head. They don't come very often, but they come with authority. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I actually picked out 28 of those dreams. And what was so interesting, I picked out 20 of the dreams. But then as I was writing the book, you know, actually writing up the dreams in short story form, in a very poetic short story form, um, I kept having more dreams. <laughs> so I kept adding some dreams to it. So it ended up with 28 dreams. And then I had to laugh. I, I had the appointment at the printer. But about two weeks before it was going to the printer, I had another pretty phenomenal dream, but I didn't have time to actually illustrate it. So it's a cliffhanger at the end of the book. So in the next book of dreams, I'll actually have the whole dream written up. <laughs> but I made it a cliffhanger. <laughs> it's not so funny. Oh, creativity, you know. <laughs> I love that. And you're anyway, just, so the, the you're just pardon me. So, I'm sorry. You're just, no, you're okay. You're just so creative. I love how things flowed and you know, one thing built on another, and then another, and another, and isn't that what life is, is it builds yes. to these points, and we never know where our journey is taking us. Well, Violet, you have a really good point, because I think in my younger years, you know, raising children, and all of the work of raising children, doing some freelance work, volunteering, like my two Girl Scout troops, all of that takes up so much time and yet it it primed me for doing some of the work that i'm doing now particularly i think around the feminine divine i think it really it really brought home the value of um love you know whether it's love your neighbor or love your coworkers or love your children and even in the tough times you know when my when my marriage broke up for example um there was still this thread of love that went through everything and there you have it there is the feminine divine you know the the nurturing and caring the thing that i let go though was nurturing and caring myself and i i really want to make a point of that i think i think we particularly as women are often called and stretched in lots of different ways to take care of you know others or organizations or programs or something like that and i think it's it's hard for a lot of women to pull back energy enough to fill that vessel we call the heart you know i have a friend that said the heart is a vessel with a lid on it and until we fill up our vessel, we don't have enough to send out. But as soon as we fill that up and that energy lifts up that lid and starts to flow out, that's what we can give out. And I've tried to remember that, that I need to fill up my own heart, which might sound like selfishness, but I don't believe it is now. But I think it is important for me to use that God spark, Jason always calls it God spark, to use that God spark to fill up with that a massive amount of creativity that we come in with and use it to our good, which in turn 
helps others. That's kind of how I'm seeing it right now. And the layers are so important in there for me to understand the layers. It's like the layers of an onion. You need all of the layers to have a healthy onion. But some of the layers are farther away from the core. You know, some are real close to the core. And then each layer is farther away from the core. And that creates that creates a healthy existence, you know. So well, I agree. <laughs> that was a long I answer. That. I love that. You know, um, I tell my healers, people that do healing, you have to fill your cup up before you can go and give to others. But I think we all, no matter what we do, whether we're a man or a woman or a child, we have to nurture and heal ourselves. We have to take care, care of ourselves. And I agree with you that um, most of the people out there, when they do something for themselves, they feel guilty. They feel like they've been selfish. They feel like they shouldn't have taken the time for themselves. And it's, it's really important. And for those watching, you know, we're in June 2020. We've been going through COVID. We've been, most of us have been isolated at home, staying home to be safe. And I really think it was the universe letting us know that it's time for us to nurture ourselves. We keep going faster and faster and faster and faster and doing more and more and more and more and more and more, <laughs> right? And we're human, right? And there comes a point where we have to stop and be in the stillness and we have to nurture our hearts. We have to get out in nature, uh, listen to the voices of the trees, smell the flowers, take time to connect to the birds singing in the trees and, and be part of that and fill ourselves up so that we can do those things for others. We can't keep going at this rate and not fill our cup and still have that. And I think today more than ever, we need the divine sentiment. We need, you know, there's so much pain and heartache and fear and doubt out in the world today right now you know we just went through the rioting and everything going in the divine feminine needs to wrap us in love and nurture and compassion and us find a place that we see each other and we honor each other no matter who we are and um, be in that space and I think she's needed today more than ever for all of us whether we're a female or male, we need that energy here on the planet and in everything that we do. So I love that. You know, the first time I got connected with you and went in a store and your art was displayed and I was like, oh, I love this stuff. I gotta have some of these pieces. And I reached out and said, hey, I'd really like to see some of your art. I'd like to have some pieces in my center. I'd like to have you be part I'd like to meet you and and we've been chatting ever since I've bought pieces in my center I have Artemis in my center I bought it as a gift for my friend which is one of your pieces that I absolutely love love lots of your pieces I'm such a fan um, but it brings <laughs> us you. it brings us to our heart space right it brings us to the place of the heart the inspiration, the love, the nurturing, nature, connection. Um, your art just really shows all of those energies and that's what I love about it um, and love that you do it. I love your book of dreams and, and we carry that in the store um, as well as you have cards and all kinds of cool stuff journal books i have people call me and go next time you see sue i need a journal book they love all of your pieces and art you got a fan club <laughs> thank you <laughs> you know you brought up a you brought up such an interesting point of this yeah. virus and i think i think we uh, you know, I think Mother Earth is in control, number one, and, and we just think we're in control. And I think it's a, it is a fabulous time for us to look at the silver lining. Now, I'm, you know, I, I have great heartache around the, the suffering that some people have really experienced. There's great heartache. That brings up compassion. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing? It's not just compassion for my own family, it's compassion for the bigger world. But I was out in my garden the other day, I just have this little garden, 
and here two uh, swallows flew over and I love swallows and I love swallow energy and you named all of these things the feminine divine the love the caring the nurturing but swallow energy is about perspective as well and you know the swallow swoops and flies and it's just such an incredibly graceful flyer and swallows will actually fly over and see what's going on on the other side of the fence they take their time they understand where people are coming from some people are coming from this perspective some people are coming from that pers perspective and as they gather the information they can build up this this cauldron of love within them knowing that they can see what's right you know what's right and then then they take it back to their children and teach their children and i think what we are being asked to do in this time of you know crisis is we are asked to have perspective and that's not just perspective about the world as perspective about who we are as people how how am i living my life how, what is my energy level? Is it frenetic? Is it filled with excitement? Am I doing the things that I really love to do? You know, I have freelance clients that I think are just absolutely phenomenal, and I love doing work for them. But in, is, in my perspective, am I balancing what I need to do for myself and what I need to do for others? So your, your point is really right on, I think, anyway. And thank you for all the wonderful comments about my work. <laughs> That's great. Well, I love I, it that my kingdom prints are hanging up in your, in, in your offices. <laughs> well, and I love them, and I give them as gifts, and I'm constantly looking at them and purchasing more because I absolutely love They're very heart-centered, and I don't think we can get enough of that. And I talk to people my students, I teach in my classes, the influences you have in your life, what you surround yourself with, whether it's art, altars, candles, people, thoughts, all of that impacts our life, our energy, who we are, and your art is amazing. I have pieces in my house, I have one downstairs, I have pieces at my center. I'm Thank constantly you. adding pieces. Um, because I absolutely love it. It brings in heart energy and I love artists like this is Ruth Thompson. I really love her art as well. And so Tom and I, my husband Tom and I love art. So we, we actually have a wall art show in normal circumstances where people can come in and shop and buy art, right? In normal yep. circumstances. Normal. <laughs> Tom and I love to buy art. We love to bring art into our home. We love to have art in our center. We like to have art around. I love when people go, wow, where did that come from? Well, that is from, and when we get the new center open, I wanna do little plaques under each one so that people know who did it even if I'm not there. And how do I find more art? Because we fall in love with, artists and their heart and their energy that they put into things so i have a question the new picture that i saw in your newsletter that looks like gaia is she new oh yeah she's been around for a while <coughs> it is a <coughs> this it's a brand new illustration um i am doing my second book for adults which is not a dream book but i have had a lot of and i think everybody does but a lot of magical things that have happened to me in my lifetime i'll just use this as an example when our when our first labrador <coughs> um died i mean she was like our first child we were we were we were so sad and she was only seven and she contracted a disease in her liver and it was one of the hardest things i've ever gone through so here we are in the vet's office and and Tona had just let go of her earthly life and I started <clears throat> I was I was just sobbing and I saw this blue film start rising up 
from her body. It was like this sheer scarf, blue cobalt blue scarf that was just, it was floating up. I mean, it wasn't coming down. And I followed it up with my eyes, just this amazing, lovely energy that left her body and went right up through the ceiling. And I thought, oh my goodness, I just saw my dog, my beloved dog's um, spirit rise out of her body. And, you know, things have happened to me along the way. I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't tell my husband because he was just, he was so devastated. Um, but I started realizing that if I don't, if I don't shut off the possibilities, if I don't shut off the potential for it, then I can see the magic. If I don't say, oh, that couldn't have possibly happened, I was just grieving and I wanted that to happen, but it couldn't possibly happen, then the magic would be gone. And, and I've had these experiences in my life that have been quite magical. And I'm not trying to brag, I think we all do. I just think a lot of people don't, um, they don't recognize it as, something other than our left brain physical experience on this earth. So, <laughs> so I decided <clears throat> I would write up 20 of these and make it into my next book. So I'm doing illustrations for each one of them, like I did in Night Threads, you know, my first book of dreams. <clears throat> well, that, that illustration in the newsletter, I decided, because I have other illustration styles that, and you're, you're familiar with my colored pencil illustration style, but I have this, <clears throat> I have a couple illustration styles that are um, airbrushing. So what I did on that one is I, I completed the line drawing, the, what you see, you know, the, I call it spring, and it's the epitome of Mother Earth in spring. And I did the whole line drawing in black ink, like I usually do. But then I went into Photoshop and I did all the colorization in there as airbrushing. So that's what you're looking at is it looks, it looks so different. I mean, the basis of it is all the same, but the, but the color aspect of it is, it is very different. It was, it's actually quite refreshing to go back to that illustration style. So the <laughs> book, the actual, the print book will be black and white, but the ebook, now I have the uh, Night Threads is in ebook form now, and the illustrations are all colorized in ebook. <clears throat> well, the ebook will have all these color illustrations in them. So, you know, always something new. <laughs> I love that. She's beautiful. She's absolutely, she's really beautiful. And I, I noticed and paid attention and was like, <gasps> That's a new one. I haven't seen that one. Um, you know, when you're a fan and you can pick out something new, I know you illustrate for other people too. And I've seen your work in other books, other, um, other lines. So I always can say, oh, that's Sue. That's Sue. That's Sue. I see Sue. But they're beautiful and they're so inspiring and they're so from the heart that I, I absolutely love that. So I'm Thank always you. excited to see what new you have coming out and what you do. So those are listening. She has art on canvas. That's absolutely amazing to get. And she also has it where you can frame it. It's really beautiful. She has journal books. She has cards. I have her cards in the store. She has children's books and books that are really cool. I bought several of those for my grandchildren. Like I said, I'm a big fan. Um, thank you. <laughs> I'm a big Sue fan. And I really yeah. wanted you to have you on the show because I think you just really inspire and motivate and, and that perspective is really good, especially think now as people are looking around of what's next what's going and you and I had a conversation last week and we talked about that this coronavirus really slowed us down it really gave us time to kind of slow down and see and now we want to hold on to a piece of that we want to continue 
and and hopefully can continue to find that space that we don't get back into this mode of gotta go gotta go gotta go gotta go right because that's what we've been really geared to do and that's what companies really kind of expect from us and I think we we can't be as fast as the computer. We can't be as fast as some technology. We're human. And there's a piece of us that needs to slow down and not be the fast serve line, right? To really just be in the energy of the moment. We've gotten so used to instant gratification. So used to, I can order on Amazon and it'll arrive at five o'clock tonight. I can go through the drive through and I can get food. It's not healthy food, but it's food and I can get it now and it'll be here now, right? But that doesn't mean that it's good for us. Doesn't mean that it's healthy for us. Doesn't mean that it fills our cups. Doesn't mean it creates convenience. It helps us keep moving faster. Um, I worry about the world because I remember when my parents grew up and they talked about TV going off at midnight. They did. They played the national anthem. <laughs> they did. And the TV You're went right. off. There was no I'm show right. <laughs> after midnight. My mother would have loved this live. I can watch TV at 2 a.m. Yes, mom, you can. We didn't have microwaves back then. If you wanted to heat something up, you had to go to the stove, get a pot out, put your food in it, and heat it up. There wasn't like a two-second stick it in the microwave. I get it hot. Um, and I wonder what my grandchildren will miss out on. You know, where is retail going? Where is shopping going? Are we going to still have stores to go and touch things and feel things and get to connect with things? Um, and we're always evolving, so I get that. I love the cartoons of Jetsons because Jetson was a cartoon when I was younger, and we thought they were crazy on what they showed on there. We're gonna do video, phone? That'll never happen. Well, what are we doing today, <laughs> right? I'm gonna put my cup underneath the spout and push a button and coffee's gonna come out? We said they've lost their mind, that'll never happen. What do we do today? We put our cup, we push the button, our hot tea, our coffee, whatever. About. So a lot of that stuff has actually come forward, which is pretty amazing that they could foresee that and we've created that. I think sometimes it's nice to enjoy what we have and have a space of gratitude. I was saying earlier today, the one thing I think COVA has definitely given me is an appreciation and a space of gratitude for being able to hug Sue, for being able to be with my family, for being able to have them in my house, to feel safe. I'm not sure that'll go away. I don't think I'll lose that space of every time I get to see them again and hug them, that I won't have a space of gratitude for, for being able to do that. Cause I've really missed them and I'm still missing them. So. I'm looking forward to that time. So, you know, I think spirit every once in a while does stuff for us to connect us back to what's important. Gratitude, taking time for ourselves, filling up our cup, the divine feminine, stepping into the energies of the heart. I think it has done all that. And if you acknowledge that and step in, I think it makes a big difference. But that's for me, that's what I've really learned through this. So how, on our la my last question that I want to ask you is, how have you worked through being at home? What are somebody at home that's having a really hard time maybe being isolated or not out there, what are some things that you would offer them that might help? What's helped you in this process? I... I have to say, I am an introvert, and being alone with myself is not a hardship. And I operate my whole graphic design business, you know, from from here. I I rarely meet with clients anymore because 
technology has made it possible for me to be either be on the phone or send jobs through email or have a Zoom meeting just like we're having right now. But what, but I have discovered that human contact can't be replaced. I have to say, I miss my daughters. I miss my grandchildren. I, I have friends that I have regularly gotten together with, whether it's for a concert or to go have dinner together. And that has been a hardship for me. And I hadn't realized how often I did. I don't do it. It's not like I go out every night or anything like that. It's just how much I've done that and took it for granted. So I think one of the things that I have is I believe very strongly that we are incredibly creative people. And I think this COVID virus has brought that forth in a lot of us. And whether we use our creativity to go through our closets and make decisions, read a new book, um, put, put in a little garden, uh, be outside more, uh, you know, pay attention to the birds because they are so wonderful right now. Um, connect with our friends, even, even through Zoom or FaceTime. You know, I, my older daughter, my younger daughter lives up in Fort Collins, so I have FaceTime with them. I believe that this is an opportunity for us. You know, I talked about the silver lining. I believe it's an opportunity for us to be creative, to not put off those things that we've always wanted to do. You know, not put off um, doing a, a miniature house or um, start doing some journaling or put a scrapbook together and go through all the photos that have been collecting dust for so long that we are being called to step into a simpler way of living using our creativity, which I think is a direct channel to that God, God spark. Um, and allow the energy of this time, the, the quietness of this time, and the simplicity of this time in many people's lives. Some people are just really stressed out, but, but to allow it to help us heal. I've been doing this seminar. It's, you know, every three days I get the new video on alternative ways of healing. And this isn't just because I have a disease. This is allowing my body to, to operate in the fullest way it possibly can. And th this last one was, how do we keep our mental and um, you know, our, our cognitive health happy? And that's what it is. It's happy. How do we keep us happy. And one of the things they brought up were very strong were all the different art therapies, music therapy, art therapy, dance therapy. Not that we have to go to somebody and get therapy. It's using it to our own gain. It's using it to, to heal our hearts, to have happiness inside of us, to have the satisfaction of actually trying something new, to have the satisfaction of doing something I've been putting off for years, you know, and, and uh, allowing ourselves to be in that zone, just to be in the zone. Turn off that phone. Turn off your email. Turn it off. Put on some music that's stimulating or meaningful bringing up memories, music that brings up memories. Put on some music, dance while you, while you go through your photographs to create a, a, an environment of creativity around you that allows you to just be in your soul. And, and that's what I've been trying to do. You were asking about what I was trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do, is to be one with that huge, creative energy force that we all have just to be one with it and allow myself to be in that zone and i have i have started taking tech no tech days i can turn my phone off i turn my computer off and don't turn it on um i mean if one of my daughters calls i yes i pick up the phone 
but I am allowing myself to be away from that frenetic energy that comes through email and it comes through Facebook and it comes through the phone and texting and all the stuff that I think or and a lot of people think that they have to respond to immediately well you know if the phone doesn't even ring because I've turned it off or the email isn't beeping at me because I don't have my computer on I can actually devote myself to this zone of happiness that allows me to slow down and to create a simpler existence at least for that period of time you know and then maybe you know swallow energy is balance maybe then just like you were saying I don't want to go back to that frenetic energy I want to have a balance between yes I have to make a living but you know what I want to be able to do my own things in my own time as well so does that answer <laughs> does that answer? that's a very long answer no. To question no I love that answer we're so connected we're so connected and that's that's beautiful advice for people to listen to to shut it off to step away and and separate so thank you thank you so much thank you for watching today thank you sue for joining us um i will add her information it's been showing at the bottom of the video so check out her website join her newsletter she has some beautiful newsletters and stay connected um you can when we open the center again you can come and see her art and we hope to see it discover your spiritual gifts really soon thank you so much sue for spending some time with me today oh and thank you violet for doing these interviews they're just wonderful i've listened to many of them so yeah. i'm very honored to be one of your interviewees <laughs> i love it i'm having thank so you. much fun so thank you so much have a great day discover connection in sacredness, become empowered, come experience a difference and discover your spiritual gift.